Everyone knows the Library of Congress is at the forefront of saving the works of authors and writers. What is not as well known is the library's deep commitment to preserving films. The headquarters of the film archive may be in Washington, D.C., but the heart and soul lie in Dayton, Ohio, on the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. In a place where people train to fight, a fight is now being fought, not in the skies or on the seas, but in laboratories and vaults. It's a fight against the clock. Here on Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, the Library of Congress has dug in its heels against the relentless march of time and its devastating effect on film. Our movies are being ravaged, and something must be done to save them. On a few acres in the American Midwest, something is. The most important part of my job is actually uh, to preserve the films before they rot, to be perfectly honest. The most important part of the job is uh, time-related. You know, it's speed-related. No one cares more about film preservation than the crew at the Library of Congress. Everyone here is really dedicated to the task at hand, and uh, uh, they do it extremely well, extremely well. But the battle going on here isn't just a fight against the passing days. It's also a struggle against a widespread misconception. One of the common conceptions or perceptions of the Library of Congress is that we're like the end of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where uh, they wheel the, the Ark back in some government warehouse somewhere never to be seen again. Uh, that's really not us. It's nice to know that some of the things I've saved have been played like on American movie classics. They've been played at uh, uh, like Cinecon and things like that. Even if I can't be there to see it myself, it's nice to know that uh, someone is enjoying them because I think that's what it's really all about. Their dedication isn't the only thing that sets them apart. Currently, our program is unique in the respect that we actually have our own working laboratory as part of the program. Uh, that's unusual uh, in, in our area because uh, no one else has, currently has a laboratory available. They do all their work at commercial facilities, uh, which do a fine job. But it, there are certain advantages to being able to do it in-house because you can get results right away. And it gives us uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, work uh, very closely with uh, uh, particular lab issues such as matching contrasts and exposures and things like that. Uh, that we can do basically in-house and see in some cases uh, within a few hours of when we've actually uh, started a project and see some results actually on the screen. For me, it's like triage in a hospital. When the films come up here, the films that are in the worst condition uh, through uh, decomposition or uh, through uh, misuse or any kind of handling over the years, those are the ones that I want to attend to first. Unfortunately, there have been a number of films we, can, we haven't been able to save. Uh, recently, we just uh, got a very early Harold Lloyd film in uh, that unfortunately most of, uh, or a great deal of the film has actually rotted away. Uh, the image has essentially dissolved through nitrate deterioration. But it's always sad when you're, when you're winding through a, a, like a really good old silent movie or something and you've got a, seems like a beautiful old print or something, and then all at once you get to an area that's decayed, suddenly it's going tack, 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 tack. And then all of a sudden it's Then This is awful noise where it's just you hear the emulsion just shredding. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's really a shame whenever we get a film and say, oh, if we'd only gotten to this two or three years earlier, then we could have it. And, and it would be around forever. The losses are painful. But it's the satisfaction of success that keeps them coming back day after day. I recently worked on the original camera negative to uh, the film Alfred Hitchcock's Suspicion. And that one kind of sent a thrill through me because I knew that this had to be the material that Hitch actually handled, you know. And, and uh, you could see, you know, it had all the original splices and, and everything, the way that it was put together. And it was in pretty good shape, except uh, for one reel, reel seven. I don't know what had happened to it at some point in its history, but it had some, some uh, terrible repairs. This little notch on the edge of the film here controlled the, a micro switch that changed the exposure in printing. Now, whoever notched the close-up inserts and a lot of the notches in suspicion made them too deep. As you can see right here, we found them torn. Somebody had put mylar tape, it's a glorified scotch tape, over the film to repair the tear. That looked very bad. First thing we did was soak off the existing mylar tape, 
then went back and carefully redid it. But still, it showed. So what we did, we first printed from the original negative, like you see here, up to the point of the defect. At that point, we cut in an inferior dupe, but that predated the tear, and then back again to the original. This way, it gives us an almost seamless copy of the original, and I believe the average person would not notice the difference. It, we figure it's the best way to get around some of the problems in this in material where we have damage like this in the original and yet have the benefit of printing from the original negative. So the next time you hear someone mention the Library of Congress, don't think about vast rooms with dusty shelves. Think about the people somewhere in Ohio working in dark rooms and under bright lights so the magic that is the movies can flicker across screens forever. I get a warm fuzzy uh, seeing my kids enjoy the same things that I, I watched uh, uh, in the movie theaters, although albeit they generally see it on television, um, at least uh, they're still, these images are still available and then they, they can watch them. And, and we can talk, we've got something in common, it ties us together. <laughs>